woke me up this morning He was beside me As I walked in our way If you say he's dead Then who has the still small voice He lived for I talked with him today strong and loving hands around me and he showed me the way I ought to go no one ever cares for me like Jesus there's no other friend so kind as he no one else could take my sins and darkness from me Oh how much He cares for me There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take my sins and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. Any doctrine you are 
are served that does not make it difficult for you to live a life of sexual perversion, abominations and all forms of sins is a product of the doctrines of devils. Run for your life. Hell is hot. Heaven is real. Heaven is real. Get divine attention through this station by feeding on choice spiritual food that has the riches of God's glory, riches of His mercies, and riches of His grace, and watch your life transform. There are different manifestations of God. Some look for His acts and end up on the plate of greedy shepherds who walk in miracles, signs and wonders, but are full of scandals. We at The Morning Cloud TV look for his ways. You become who you look for and who you walk with. How do you know that you have departed from the faith? When you can no longer stand sound doctrine. When you treat sins with kids' gloves. When you start thinking that deliverance prayers will be the answer to your problems. When you want to do the work of God without doing His word. If a message that warns you about hell evokes resentment in your heart against the preacher. Whenever this happens, disconnect from everything and stay connected to the Morning Cloud TV and let Jesus minister to you. is the Morning Cloud Television, a portal of deep intimacy with Christ, a portal of divine wisdom, a portal of divine direction, a portal of revealed truths, a portal of mercy for you and your family. Things are really different these days. I mean, taking advantage of people's generosity, scammers, even in the church. <laughs> God commanded us to be loving and kind. Yes, love and kindness is part of the Christian faith. But if it's not guided by the Holy Spirit, we will end up becoming victims of con men and women. The Cry of the Spirit Ministries is a fast-growing ministry and as typical of any fast-growing ministry, scammers, con men and women come to take advantage of the growth. People have been taking advantage of our social media platforms coming to make money requests and unfortunately some of our members have fallen victim to it. As has been and still is no secret, the Cry of the Spirit Ministries does not beg nor borrow. And any giving done in the ministry is divinely directed under the oversight of the apostolic leader, Apostle Richard E. Esther Key. This message is here to warn you against any type of money requests that come either through social media platforms, text messages, email, or any other type of platform such as WhatsApp. These types of things that are soliciting for funds either on behalf of the ministry or begging for personal financial assistance is strongly condemned. Do not be lured into ignorantly giving any type of financial help, even with good intentions, 
lest you end up sinking your economic life. Once again, be vigilant. We deeply appreciate all the love and support that you've accorded us thus far and look forward to keep surging ahead until the army of the Lord arises. Thank you all and may God bless you. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. This is the Morning Cloud Television, a portal of deep intimacy with Christ, a portal of divine wisdom, a portal of divine direction, a portal of revealed truths, a portal of mercy for you and your family. Welcome to our Sunday service today. And um, by God's grace, um, this is the only Sunday service we may be having here because of change of events. But um, for those of you that have not been following the announcement, I did say that we're going to have a Sunday service church in the house today. So, and um, it seems some of you are not following announcements and things like that. Or maybe the advert of today's national broadcast like confused you. But this is our Sunday service today, and I, we hope that things run well so that this will be the last church of the house Sunday service uh, because of uh, all this lockdown. Now, yesterday I was reading about the news that the, the, the guys are now prophesying again that in July there will be a spark. In July, that is the way they talk. There will be a spark. There will be a spark before you know they will say lockdown. If you look at it, it's just the same thing. There is no difference. So, so I was thinking that let it not be that by July, they now say again we are going on lockdown. So it's really crazy the way the wicked is manipulating the process just to make money. The world is a wicked place. The system that is being run is a very, very wicked system. So long as money comes, they don't care what happened to the lives of men. So those are the things that are happening again. So that is why I say I hope this could be the last church in the house session we have so that by next Sunday we'll be in the hall. So today is um, I've been set aside to really uh, pray and also uh, speak to the nation the word of the Lord. And I believe that you are already down there. If you are tuning for the first time, these are Sunday service. We call it Church in the House, the Crown of the Spirit Ministries. And we want to encourage you to maintain the decorum of a church service by sitting down and getting your Bible on your writing pad and participate. And do not go into answering phone, doing house chores, because you don't do that in the church. So in this service, I believe that there is no distance in the spirit because we are more of spirit beings than natural beings. So we easily connect from that environment of the spiritual and get more impact or maybe receive more from God than when we walk in the natural plane. So today, we are going to connect again spiritually, fellowship together, you are to me standing here, with the word. Because when people camp around the word of the Lord, God comes upon them like rain. The rain of his spirit falls on them. So, and the word of the Lord is the core, or should be the core of human existence. Because our creator said, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. So you must understand that the, our creator told us that it is his proceeding word that should form the core of our being. So when we fellowship together and camp around the word of the Lord, we experience an outbreak of his presence, an outbreak of his power. And I believe that today you will experience an outbreak of his presence and an, an outbreak of his power. Even as we pray and as we also go into the world and experience God in dimensions that have been reserved for our generation. So to start with, follow me to the book of Psalm. Let's go to the book of Psalm chapter 37 one of our um, most read Psalms, uh, Psalm 37. Let's just read uh, some portions there and, and, and kick up the service of today. Psalm 37, I'm going to read from verse 
12, it says, The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, to slay those who are of upright conduct. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. That is the heritage of the righteous. Hallelujah. Verse 16 says, A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. Now, if you fall among those that the Bible called the righteous, if you have given your life to Christ especially, there is no amount of wickedness that should prevail against you. There is no amount of wickedness that should prevail against you. Because uh, we have a God who has given us precious promises in his word that when they, are, they plot against us, he laughs at them because their day is coming. When they draw the sword and burn it against us, God makes sure it goes back to their own heart. And the Bible says, as we walk in contentment and trust in him, he's going to help us to overcome the works of the wicked. And when we fellowship like this, God does not just grant us victory over the wicked. God also gives us the power to overcome sin, to overcome personal deeds of wickedness, the power to live right. The Bible says, Upon man Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So I believe that even as we fellowship today, right there at your home, God is going to manifest in your life, and you are going to possess your possession. He will give you what you need, the deliverance you need, the, the, the holiness you need to overcome sinful habit, and whatever you need, God is going to hand over to you. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you to be on your feet and let's go to God in a, with a word of prayer. One major thing that brings us into the blessing of the atmosphere is to obey, is to walk in obedience. So when we say we rise, we rise. When we say we sit, we sit. So as, as we walk in obedience, we, be, we enter into the realm called one accord in the spirit. And once we get into the realm of one accord in the spirit, you see God pouring his presence and his spirit upon our lives. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. So let's lift up our voice this morning and begin to thank God for keeping us, for sustaining us, for watching over us, for being our God, for being our King, for waking us up this morning, for counting us among the living of today, for helping us to function properly, for keeping our minds for keeping our souls, for keeping our blood stream, for keeping every critical organs of our bodies. Let's just lift up our voice and begin to bless him for our families. Let's thank him for our children. Let's thank him for the things that he has done for us. Let's appreciate him for his marvelous deeds in our lives. Father, we thank you because there's no one like unto you in power and majesty. Lord, we appreciate you for your goodness. We appreciate you for your marvelous works in our lives. This is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. So we appreciate you for everything that you have been doing for us. We thank you for fighting our battles. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our King. Lord, we bless your name because there's no one like unto you in power and majesty. We thank you, Lord, for not dealing with us according to our sins. We thank you, Lord, for not handing us over to the teeth of our enemies. Lord, we bless your name, O God, for defeating the will of the wicked. We thank you, Lord, for frustrating the counsel of the wicked so that their hands do not perform their enterprise. We bless your name, O God, for being our God, for being our King, for being with us in an hour of season. We thank you, Father, for this very moment, O God, for keeping us. Your word says that the Spirit of God has made us and the bread of the Almighty give us life. We thank you for giving us life. We thank you for making us. We thank you for sustaining us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for all your marvelous deeds in our lives. We bless your name because there is no one like unto you in power and majesty. We appreciate you, O oh God, for your greatness. We thank you, Lord, for your greatness. 
We thank you, Lord, for your greatness. We give you praise, O oh, ancients of days, for fighting our battles. We thank you, Lord, for not allowing your word to fall to the ground. We thank you, Lord, for establishing us in righteousness, for establishing us in truth. We bless your name for establishing us, O oh God. In, even this day, we thank you for being our shield, for being our refuge, for being our stronghold, for being our strong tower. Lord, we know that you are our portion in the land of the living. We bless your name, O oh God. Even this day that you have assembled us in your name. You have brought us together, O oh God, to have a fellowship with your word. Lord, we pray that your spirit will take preeminence control even this morning in our lives, O oh God, and in our destinies. We thank you, Father, because if you, are, if, you, if you have not been on our side, Lord, the floods of the ungodly will have swallowed us. If you have not been on our side, even when we walk in personal foolishness, we have been consumed. If you have not been by our side, mighty God will not be alive today. Therefore, we thank you, Father, for being our side, on our side. We thank you, Lord, for everything invisible and visible that you have been doing for us. Lord, we bless your name, O God, for daily you have indeed loaded us with benefits. We appreciate you, O essence of this. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's begin to pray and commit ourselves into the hands of the Lord. Before then, open your Bible to Psalm 66. Let me show you a scripture this morning. Psalm, sorry, Psalm 68. Psalm 66, sorry. Psalm 66, verse 18. Open your Bible to Psalm 66, verse 18. It says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now, we're going to pray and tell the Lord to purge our hearts this morning. That if there is any iniquity within us, if there is any sin, whatever we may have done that runs contrary to his will, his purpose, and his plans for our lives. The Bible says nobody can ascend to the heel of the Lord with filthy hands and filthy hearts. God is holy, and those that worship him must be holy. So let's pray and tell the Lord to purge us of every sin, wherever we have sinned against him. The things that we may have done wrong, open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Father, I come before your throne this morning. This moment, we come before your throne as a people. Lord, we lift up our hearts. We lift up our spirit. We lift up our beings unto you. We pray, O oh God, that wherever we have sinned against you, in our words, in our actions, in our hearts, O oh God, in the things we have done, and the things we have failed to do, we pray that you will show us mercy this morning. You will forgive us of every sin, O oh God. You will cleanse us of every unrighteousness by the greatness of your power, O oh God. O Makili Basatali Maya Babasatalia Rekobo Seteli Kayaba. Wherever there's lawlessness, wherever there's sinfulness, wherever there's sin in any life right now, hear our voice this morning. And we pray unto you that you have mercy upon us, for we are sinners. And you purge us this morning, O God, from the practice of sin. And you give us the dominion to walk in holiness, the dominion to walk in godliness in the name of Jesus. That you put your fear in our heart, that you revive us this morning, O God, that we will walk in the fear of the Lord again and again and again. Lord, you revive our spirit, you revive our souls, you send a, a fresh fire upon our lives even this morning. You purge us, O God, of every unclean thing, in the name of Jesus Christ, you purge us of every unclean thing. In the name of Jesus, you purge us of every unclean thing by the greatness of your power, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, that you cleanse us from every uncleanliness. You purge our hearts, you purge our spirit, you purge our souls by the greatness of your power this morning. O oh, Makili Kalabasatalia. Malibro Sondoli Kalibo Setele Rekaba Sandali Kayaba. Let, O oh God, your seraphims and just 
be sent among us even today in every home. That they will cleanse us. They will purge us of every sinful habit. They will take away impurities from our heart. Oh, Makili Kabasata. They will take that iniquity from our hearts. In the name of Jesus, they will walk in our souls. That let your power walk in our souls. Let the fire of your spirit walk in our memory. Let the fire of your spirit walk in our imaginations. In the name of Jesus, as you purify us, as you cleanse us, as you wash us by the greatness of your power. Oh, Makili Kalabasatalia. Le Mama Kadali Brasoto Le Kala. As you walk in our lives, O oh God, even this morning, we present ourselves to you, O oh God, that you look into our lives and you purge us of every impurities in the name of Jesus. Let your precious blood cleanse us from every sin, even this morning. Let your precious blood cleanse us from every sin, even this morning. Let it purge us, let it purify us by the greatness of your power oh god oh makali basatale rema makadali kalibra sandalia mali musondoli kalibo setele let your blood purge us let your blood cleanse us let your blood purify us let your blood wash us in the name of jesus let your blood purge us let your blood cleanse us let your blood purify us let your blood wash us by the greatness of your power oh makili Kalabasatalia, Rema Makadali Krobosetele, Mali Mosondoli Kalibasatale Kayaba. Lord, wash us with your precious blood. Lord, cleanse us with your precious blood. Lord, purify us with your precious blood. Lord, purify us, oh God, even this morning. Let there be no field or sin in our lives. In the name of Jesus, I will leave this service pure as gold. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Oh God, that you do a work in our lives today and take us further, oh God, in our work and talk with you. Take us further in our faith, oh God. Pour your presence in our life as never before. Purify us, oh God, and wash us thoroughly. Make us vessels of honor in the name of Jesus. Make us people with capacity to depart from iniquity. Oh, Makalibo Setele Kayaba. Begin to pray and plead the blood of Jesus over your life, over your soul, over yourself right now, over your home, wherever you are falling this very morning. Begin to pray and plead the blood of Jesus. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus in our homes. We plead the blood of Jesus in this place. We plead the blood of Jesus to sanctify us right now, to sanctify our dwelling, to sanctify our dwelling, to sanctify our dwelling place. Let your precious blood sanctify our dwelling. Let your precious blood sanctify our dwelling in the name of Jesus. Let your precious blood sanctify our dwelling by the greatness of your power, Lord. Let your precious blood sanctify our dwelling by the greatness of your power. Oh, Makali Masatali Kolobro Satalia. Meli Masandali Kalaba Satalia. Let your precious blood sanctify our dwelling let it purify our dwelling let it purify our dwelling let it wash us oh god let it purge us from every uncleanliness let your precious blood speak against everything oh god that may be contrary to us this morning in the name of jesus christ we pray that your blood will speak for us we pray that your blood will fight for us oh makili kaba satalia that your blood will purify our atmosphere Yes, that your blood will purify our homes. Eh? That iniquity will not be our reign this morning. That your blood, oh God, will be an answer to every form of impurities in the name of Jesus. That your precious blood will speak in our lives even this morning by the greatness of your power, oh God. Let your blood speak in our lives. Let your blood wash us. Let your blood work in us. Let your blood purify us by the greatness of your power in the name of Jesus. Jesus, my libro set le calamasa in calibro send the Baba Satalia, be in calabo sotoli calabra sanda. Mali Mosendele Calibro Setelia. Let your precious blood wash in wash us, O God. Let your precious blood purify us, O God. 
Let your precious blood wash in us in this morning. In the name of Jesus, let it take down every activities of the wicked right now in our lives, in our homes, in our dwelling. We decree that the precious blood of Jesus will take down the activity of the wicked, whatever we have done to usher in any unclean atmospheres. We plead the blood of Jesus against it right now in the name of Jesus, that the precious blood of Jesus will take down every atmosphere of impurity, every the atmosphere of demonic manifestations that the precious blood of Jesus will speak this morning. Oh, Makaliba Satale, Malibro Sondoli Kalibra Satalia, Makali Mosendeli Kalabo Setelia, Rema Makandali Kalabra Satalia, Mali Mosondoli Kalabra Satalia. Father, let your message speak for us this morning. Let your message speak for us this morning. In the name of Jesus, let your message speak for us, O oh God. Let your message speak for us, O oh God. Let your message speak for us, O oh God. By the greatness of your power, let your message speak. By the greatness of your power, let your message speak. By the greatness of your power, let your message speak. By the greatness of your power, let your message speak. Let your message speak for us even this moment. Let your message speak for us even this moment. By the greatness of your power, O God. Mali mosetele kali masa. Rekaba satali kolobro setelia. Makali mosondoli kali brasatalia. By the greatness of your power, let your message speak for us. By the greatness of your power, let your message speak for us. By the greatness of your power, let your message speak for us. O makili kolomo setelia. Lekayaba Reba Bakanda Li Kala Brasata Mali Moso Li Kali Brosetelia In Kali Masanda Li Kala Brasata Makali Brosondo Li Kali Brasatalia Makali Mosetele Kala Basatalia Mali Brosondo Li Kali Brosete Let your message speak for me this morning. Let your message speak for me this morning. Let your message speak for me this morning. That I will obtain mercy to find grace in time of need. Let your message speak for me this morning by the greatness of your power, O God. O Makali Bosetele Kaya Baba. Rema Sandali Kolobro Setelia. Begin to lift up your voice and ask the Lord to frustrate every plans of the devil against your life in any form. That if there's any plan that the enemy is cooking against you in any form, any weapon being fashioned, ask the Lord to destroy them right now. Begin to plead the blood of Jesus against the plans of the enemy against the works of darkness father in the name of jesus you said in your word that the counsel of the wicked shall be brought to nothing. Therefore, we come before your throne this morning and we begin to pray, O oh God, that every counsel of the wicked against us, every plans of the wicked one, we pray, O oh God, that your power will begin to bring them down in the name of Jesus, that you begin to frustrate the counsel of the wicked. You begin to cancel the plans of the ungodly in the name of Jesus Christ. Every plans of darkness, O oh God, that may be around in our lives, any plan of the wicked that may be cooked against us in any realm, Father, we plead the blood of Jesus against it by the greatness of your power, O oh God. Mali kabo setele maya baba basatalia in kali masandali kolobro sotolia mali masandali kali basatale koyobo Reba makada la kala brasatale mali mosondoli kali brosetalia reko mositeli kali brasatalia that you begin to execute your will in my life let your kingdom come upon me let your will be done in my life let your kingdom come upon me lord let your will be done in my life let your kingdom frustrate every counsel of the wicked let your will be done in my life oh god in the name of jesus let your kingdom come upon us this morning and let your will be done in our life this morning. Let your kingdom, O oh God, be established. Let your kingdom bring down every other tradition in our lives. Let your kingdom bring down any other kingdom in our lives. Lord, I declare over my life 
this morning. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. I declare over this place this morning. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. I declare over every home, over every dwelling place, over every man, over every woman. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done. Even this morning, O oh God, let nothing hinder the advance of your kingdom. Lord, we yield ourselves to you even this moment. We yield ourselves to you, O oh God. We ask that your kingdom will come, that your kingdom will be established even this morning, O oh God. Your kingdom will be established again. Your kingdom will be renewed in our hearts. Your kingdom will be renewed in our hearts. O oh, Makilika Let there be a renewal of the kingdom this morning. Let there be a renewal of the kingdom this morning. Let there be a renewal of the kingdom, O oh God. Let there be a renewal of the kingdom, O oh God, by the greatness of your power, Lord. Let there be a renewal of the kingdom. Let there be a renewal of the kingdom by the greatness of your power. Let there be a renewal of your kingdom by the greatness of your power, Lord. Let there be a renewal of the kingdom in our life this morning as we assemble in our different homes, as we assemble before your throne. Let there be a renewal of the kingdom. Let there be a renewal of the kingdom. Begin to ask the Lord for the renewal of his kingdom in your life. And the circumcision of our hearts, begin to pray. Lord, let there be a renewal of the kingdom this morning. And let it be the circumcision of our hearts, O oh God. Lord, circumcise our hearts. Lord, renew your kingdom. Lord, circumcise our hearts. Lord, renew your kingdom. Mali basatale kayababa. Mali mosondoli kali bosetele. Lord, satisfy our heart. Circumcise our heart. Renew your kingdom this morning. Circumcise our hearts this morning. Renew your kingdom this morning. Roll away the reproach of Egypt from our lives. Whatever represent the reproach of Egypt, O oh God. Let it be rolled away even this morning as you circumcise our hearts, eh, as you renew your kingdom in our lives, O oh God. O makili kala masatale, meli brasandali kala bosotole kayaba, rema makandali kala basatale, lama makandali kolo brosotole kayaba, mali masandali kali brosetele, enkali masandali kala brasa Remo Mokodoli Kali Brose, Makili Kali Brasatale Kolomose, Rebaba Baba Kadali Kali Brasatale, Mali Mosondoli Kala Brasatalia, En Kali Masetele Koyobo. Let there be the renewal of the kingdom. Let there be the circumcision of our hearts. Let there be the renewal of the kingdom. Let there be circumcision of our hearts this morning in the name of Jesus. That everyone that will be part of this service today. We experience a renewal of the kingdom. We experience a circumcision of the heart. Oh God, that the reproach of Egypt will be rolled away from our lives. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh Makili Kalaba Satale, Rebaba Kadali Kalibra Sata, Malibro Sotali Kalibra Satalia. Begin to pray and present yourself before God. Begin to ask the Lord for a visitation in your life this morning. Begin to ask the Lord for a visitation in your life. God, the Bible says that, that, that God is ever mindful of us. Therefore, ask him for a visitation. Lord, I need an encounter with you this morning. I need an encounter with you this morning. As you renew your kingdom in my life, grant me an encounter. Grant me a significant encounter. The Bible says the expectation of the wicked Oh, shall be cut off, but the expression of the righteous shall be granted. Therefore, begin to pray and tell the Lord, build a righteous expectation this morning. Tell the Lord, ask him for encounters. Lord, we place a demand for supernatural encounters this morning. Even in this service, oh God, we ask that your spirit will come upon us. There will be encounters, oh God. There will be encounters, oh God, that will make our life count, that will add value to our faith in the name of Jesus. Let there be encounters today that will add value to our faith. Let there be encounters today that will renew us, oh God. Let there be encounters today that will give us dominion over sin. Let there be encounters today that will paralyze the practice of sin. Let there be encounters today 
in the name of Jesus, that will heal the sick, that will deliver the oppressed by the greatness of your power. Oh, makili kalabasata liya, in kali mosedeli kalabrasata. Let there be encounters today. Let there be encounters today in the name of Jesus. Let there be encounters today. Makali basata le kaya baba ba. Rema makanda li kolobrosato liya. Makali basata. Let there be encounters today, O oh God. Let there be encounters today, O oh God, that will renew us, Lord. That will renew us, Lord. That will re energize us, Lord. An encounter that will revive us. That will revive the prayer lives of your people. That will revive our relationships with you. That will revive anything in our lives that may have been dealt. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we pray for such encounters today today. Oh, Makili Kalabasata, make this service a service of deep encounters. Make this service a service of amazing encounters. Oh, Makili Kalabasata, Le Kayaba, Reba Baba Baba Kadali Kalibro Sotolia, Lima Makada Lakrabasata Le Koyobo. Let there be encounters that will be granted. Let there be encounters that will be granted. In the name of Jesus, Lord, grant us encounters. Oh, Reba Satalia, that will change our lives. Lord, grant us encounters that will bring amazing turnarounds. Lord, grant encounters. Whoever need an encounter in, your, in their life to come out of sinful habit, let an encounter be granted today. Whoever need an encounter to come out of sinful habit, to come out of the practice of sin and wickedness, Lord, grant the encounter today. Oh, let there be light in every darkness. Let there be light in every darkness. Wherever dark, darkness rules, let there be light in the name of Jesus. Wherever darkness reigns, let there be light in the name of Jesus. Oh, makili kalabasata le kayaba. Lord, give us light in every darkness. Lord, in, enlighten our darkness. Let us see light and understanding. Let the friendly counsel of your spirit, let it be upon our tabernacle this morning. By the greatness of your power, O oh God. O oh, Makili Kalabasatale, Rema Makadali Kalebrasata, Mali Mosondoli Kalibrosetelia, Le Kalibrasandali Kayaba. Lord, there is no one like unto you in power and majesty. Therefore, awake and grant supernatural encounters. Awake and grant supernatural encounters today in the name of Jesus. Awake and grant supernatural encounters today in the name of Jesus. Grant encounters to every soul. Grant encounters to every household. Grant encounters to everyone, O oh God. Expel darkness in the name of Jesus. Expel every form of darkness. O oh, Makili Kalabasatalia. In the life of everyone that will be part of this service today, Lord, expel every form of darkness. Lord, expel every form of darkness. Lord, expel every form of darkness. Oh, makili kalabasatale, rema makandali kalibro sotolia, lima makandali kalibra satale koyobo. Lord, expel every act of darkness by the greatness of your power. Lord, expel every act of darkness. Darkness. Oh, makili kolo mositeli kaya baba. Rema makadali kalabra satalia. Expel every form of darkness. Let darkness not hold sway in our lives tonight, today, in this service, oh God. Destroy the grip of darkness from our lives. Let darkness no longer hold sway in our lives. In the name of Jesus, let there be visitations, oh God. Let there be visitations. Oh God, let there be visitations, oh God, to fulfill your redemptive plan for us, oh God. Let there be visitations that will fulfill your redemption, redemptive plan for our lives. Let there be visitations that will fulfill your redemptive plans for our lives. In the name of Jesus, awake, awake, O arm of the Lord, and grant us the visitations we need. Awake, awake, O Lion of Judah, and grant us the visitations that we need. Awake, awake, O bright and morning star, and grant us the visitations 
provisions we need in the name of Jesus. Awake, awake, O oh bright and morning star, and grant us the visitations we need. O Makili Kala Masatale, Reba Baba Kadali Kala Brosotolia, Enkali Masandali Kala Basatalia, Rebo Bosondoli Kali Brosete. Lord, awake, awake, and grant us the visitations. Lord, awake, awake, and grant us the visitation. The visitation we need, O oh God, let it be granted us this morning. Mali Bositali Kali Masata, Reba Baba Kadali Kali Brosotolia, Makili Kali Masandali Kolo Brosetelia, En Kali Masandali Kala Basata, Raba Baba Kadali Kolo Mosete, Reka Basata Li Kali Brosotolia, Mali Mosindeli Kali Brasatale, Reko Mositeli Kali Brasatalia, Makali Mosondoli Kala Basetelia, Grant us, O oh God, visitations, grant us amazing visitations that will bring the works of darkness to an end, that will establish your redemptive plan for our lives in the name of Jesus. That everyone that will be part of this service today, by the greatness of your power, there will be visitations, O oh God. There will be visitations, O oh God. Mali Kobo Sitali Kalama Satalia. In Calibro Sendele Kayaba, there will be visitations, O oh God, that will turn their lives around, that will paralyze the finger of darkness, that will paralyze the finger of darkness. Makili Kalumo Setele, Reba Baba Kandali Calibra Sata, Lord, grant us visitations that will paralyze the finger of darkness. In the name of Jesus, step into every life today. Step into every home today. Renew, O oh God. Revive, O oh God. Deliver the oppressed. Heal the sick by the greatness of your power. Glorify your name, O oh God. Fulfill your will and your purpose. Let me begin to pray for the spirit of revelation, the spirit of power, the spirit of revelation and of power to be released even in this very service to every home that will be part of this service today. Begin to pray. Lord, release the spirit of revelation. Lord, release the spirit of power. Lord, release your fear, O oh God, to dismantle everything that does not align with your will. Lord, spread your fear. Diffuse the knowledge of Christ eh, among the perishing and among those that have been saved. O riba satale kaya bababa. Mali mosondoli kalibra satalia. Break out, O oh God, in every life. Eh. Break out, O oh God, in every home. Break out, O oh God, in every life. Break out, O oh God, in every home. Break out, O oh God, in every life. Break out, O oh God, in every home. Lord, break out in everyone's life today. Every home that will be connected. Everyone you will stay to connect. Let your mercy, O oh God, speak in their life. Let your amazing wonders break forth, O oh God. I ask, O oh God, that you execute your redemptive plan today. You execute your redemptive plan for everyone. You execute your redemptive plan for every household. You execute your redemptive plan for everyone. Oh, Makali Kobo Siteli Kayaba. Lord, execute your redemptive plan for everyone. Lord, execute your redemptive plan for everyone today in the name of Jesus. Execute your redemptive plan for everyone today. Execute your redemptive plans for everyone today by the greatness of your power, O God. O Makali Masatale Kayaba Rema Makadali Kalibro Setele Makalibro Sondoli Kaliba Satalia Rema Makadali Kolobro Setelia Execute your redemptive plan, O God. Execute your redemptive plans, O God. Execute your redemptive plans, O God. By the greatness of your power, Lord. Execute your redemptive plans. O God, Mali Bursotole Calibra Satalia, execute your redemptive plan, execute your redemptive plans in the name of Jesus, execute your redemptive plans by the greatness of your power, Lord, execute your redemptive plans, let there be a turnaround, let there be a turnaround, let there be a turnaround by the greatness of your power, let there be a turnaround, O Makili Colomo Setele Kayaba, and force 
your will in every home and force your will in every life and force your will in every home and force your will in every life even today in the name of Jesus and force your will in the name of Jesus and force your will in the name of Jesus and force your will oh God permeate every territory transform moral landscape let there be outbreak of your glory in the name of Jesus. Lord, you have a plan for every soul. We pray, oh God, that the plans be executed, that your redemptive plan for us will be executed, your redemptive plan for every household, for every soul, for everyone, oh God, even in this special outreach today, will be executed. Execute your redemptive plan. Execute your redemptive plan. Execute your redemptive plans, oh God. Execute Execute your redemptive plans, O oh God. Mali Komo Setele Kayaba. Execute your redemptive plans, O oh God. Execute your redemptive plans, O oh God. Today, in the name of Jesus, in the lives of your people, let there be an execution of your redemptive plan. Oh, Makili Kabasatalia. Oh, Calibro Sendeli Kalabrasata. Lord, intercept those that are on their way to eternal damnation. Intercept them, O oh God, by this broadcast today. Intercept them, O oh God, by this service today. By the greatness of your power, intercept as many that are on their ways to eternal damnation. As many that are on their way to eternal damnation. Lord, intercept them today by your power. Lord, intercept them today by your power. O Makili Kalama Satale Kayaba. Mali Brosodoli Calibra Satalia. Mekeli Mosetele Calibra Satalia. Father, intercept as many that are on their way. O oh God, to eternal damnation. Let your power, O oh God, rescue them. Let there be execution of divine rescue. Let there be execution of divine rescue. Let there be execution of divine rescue. In the name of Jesus. Let there be execution of divine rescue. O Makali Koposetele Kali Masatalia. Rema Makandali Kali Brosetelia. Let there be execution of divine rescue today. Let there be execution of divine rescue today. Let there be, O oh God, a release of your glory. Let there be a release of your glory. Let there be execution of divine rescue. Oh, Makili Kalobo Setele Kayaba. Let there be execution of divine rescue in the name of Jesus. Let there be execution of divine rescue. Oh, for souls today, dispatch your reaper angels to every home, to every life. Execute divine rescue. Execute divine rescue. Execute divine rescue in the name of Jesus, Makili Kalabra Satalia. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. You are my Savior, Jesus. You are my healer, Jesus. Your name, your name is a me. Raku, your name is a comforter. Your name is a mighty God. G Your name, your name is a miracle. Your name is a comfort. Your name is a mighty. 
God Jesus Your name Your name Is a miracle Your name Is a call for all Your name Is a mighty God Jesus Your name Is a miracle Your name Is a conforum your name is a mighty God, Jesus. Oh, my body is your sanctuary. Ah, my body is your sanctuary. Oh, purify me like gold, so I may be bold to say, My body, oh, is your sanctuary. Hallelujah, my body is your sanctuary. Hallelujah, my body is your sanctuary. Purify me, Lord, purify me like gold. So I may be bold to say my body, oh, is your sanctuary. My body, my body is your sanctuary. Hallelujah, my body. Is your sanctuary. Purify me, Lord. Purify me like gold. So I may be bold to say my body. Is your sanctuary. So I will make my life your dwelling place i will build your throne in my heart hallelujah come father come son Come, Holy Spirit, come and take your place in my life. Come and make, Lord, come and make my life your dwelling place come and build your throne in my heart 
even the service. Come, Father, come, Son, come, Holy Spirit, come and take your place. In my heart, in our lives, Lord. Finally, let's pray and tell the Lord. You know, the mystery of iniquity is at work. It makes sure that we don't lead lives that allow God to take his place in us. The mystery of iniquity tries to put our lives out of order with our God. It's a, it's a spirit of lawlessness that disorganizes things. We're going to pray and tell the Lord, arrest the mystery of iniquity in this service today. Arrest the spirit of lawlessness and bring our lives in order with you so that you can take your place in our life. Let's begin to pray. Mali, brasata, koyobo. Mali basatale kali brasatalia. Lord, we ask this morning, O oh God, that you will arrest the mystery of iniquity in the name of Jesus. You will come to take your place in our lives. You will neutralize the powers of the mystery of iniquity in the life of everyone that will be part of this service today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask, O oh God, that you neutralize the mystery of iniquity in the lives of your people by the greatness of your power. O makili kalama satale koyobo rema makada li kalibra satale. That by the greatness of your power, O oh God, you will dismantle the mystery of iniquity. You will release the spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus Christ upon our lives, O oh God, upon every life, upon every home. In this very broadcast, in the name of Jesus, you will dismantle the mystery of iniquity. You will smash the works of the mystery of iniquity, and every soul that is trapped in it, Lord. You will pull them out in the name of Jesus. Oh, makili kalibro soto le kayaba satalia. Mali mosete le kalibro sete le kayaba. La kaliba satali kolobro sete. You will dismantle the mystery of iniquity by the greatness of your power in the name of Jesus that whatever does not glorify you in the lives of your people, you will pull it down. Whatever does not glorify you in our lives in this service, you will pull it down. You will execute your will, oh God. Execute your purpose. You will take your place in our lives. You will take your place in our lives. You will take your place in our lives by the greatness of your power. You will take your place in our lives. Oh, makili kalama satale. Reba baba bakadali kolibra satale. Come and take your your place in our lives, oh God. Come and take your place in our lives, oh God, by the greatness of your power, Lord. Come and take your place in our lives eh, by the greatness of your power. Come and take your place in our lives. Eh. Bring the mystery of iniquity down in the hearts of everyone that will be part of this today dismantle the mystery of iniquity establish the mystery of godliness in the name of Jesus whatever does not align with your will whatever does not align with your purpose let it be brought down in this service that whatever would not glorify you O oh God will not show up your spirit will take preeminence your lordship will be executed whatever has to do with the mystery of iniquity will be pulled down 
now in the name of Jesus. You will release your presence. You will release the apostolic anointing into everyone's life today to dismantle what does not align with your will and your purposes in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray, oh God, that upon every dwelling place there will be a covering of your glory to execute your redemptive plan. Upon every home, upon every heart, there will be a covering of your glory this morning to execute your redemptive plan. To the glory of your name, O God. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your toes wherever you are. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit this service into your hands. We pray, oh God, that your hand will be heavy upon us to build and to plant in the name of Jesus, to prosper us, oh God, to cause us to flourish in your presence, that everyone that will be part of this very service across the nations of the earth will experience you as never before in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you for the, being part of this service today. Now we're going to go for a very short break. And when we come back from the break, we will start our, uh, we we'll bring in the word of the Lord. Meanwhile, use this opportunity to send the link. We are streaming live on Facebook on all our social media platforms. Use opportunity to send the link to everybody to participate in this very national broadcast and call a friend to call a friend. But we'll be on both Citizen TV and the Morning Cloud Television. So spread it wide and let everybody know that it has started. I'll be back after the break. God bless you. Spirit Online Radio, invading darkness with the voice of the Lord. Any doctrine you are served that does not make it difficult for you to live a life of sexual perversion, abominations and all forms of sins is a product of the doctrines of devils. Run for your life. Hell is hot. Heaven is, real. Heaven is real. Get divine attention through this station by feeding on choice spiritual food that has the riches of God's glory, riches of His mercies, and riches of His grace 
and watch your life transform. How do you know that you have departed from the faith? When you can no longer stand sound doctrine. When you treat sins with kids' gloves. When you start thinking that deliverance prayers will be the answer to your problems. When you want to do the work of God without doing His word. If a message that warns you about hell evokes resentment in your heart against the preacher. Whenever this happens, disconnect from everything and stay connected to the Morning Cloud TV and let Jesus minister to you. Things are really different these days. I mean, taking advantage of people's generosity, scammers, even in the church. <laughs> God commanded us to be loving and kind, yes. Love and kindness is part of the Christian faith. But if it's not guided by the Holy Spirit, we will end up becoming victims of con men and women. The Cry of the Spirit Ministries is a fast-growing ministry. And as typical of any fast-growing ministry, scammers, con men and women come to take advantage of the growth. People have been taking advantage of our social media platforms, coming to make money requests. And unfortunately, some of our members have fallen victim to it. As has been and still is no secret, the cry of the Spirit Ministries does not beg nor borrow. And any giving done in the ministry is divinely directed under the oversight of the apostolic leader, Apostle Richard E. Esther Key. This message is here to warn you against any type of money requests that come either through social media platforms, text messages, email, or any other type of platform such as WhatsApp. These types of things that are soliciting for funds either on behalf of the ministry or begging for personal financial assistance is strongly condemned. Do not be lured into ignorantly giving any type of financial help, even with good intentions, lest you end up sinking your economic life. Once again, be vigilant. We deeply appreciate all the love and support that you've accorded us thus far and look forward to keep surging ahead until the army of the Lord arises. Thank you all and may God bless you. Keep fighting the good fight of faith. different manifestations of God. Some look for his acts and end up on the plate of greedy shepherds who walk in miracles, signs and wonders but are full of scandals. We at the Morning Cloud TV look for his ways. You become who you look for and who you walk with. This is the Morning Cloud Television. A portal of deep intimacy with Christ, a portal of divine wisdom, a portal of divine direction, a portal of revealed truths, a portal of mercy for you and your family. Welcome to bring it to my attention. We live in a world today where the devil <laughs> does not want very important things to be brought to our attention. Things like eternity, things like hell, things like 
with heaven, things like peace with God, things like, like that the activities of charlatans that are destroying the lives of people, things like true Christianity that have been buried over the years. Bring it to my attention. It's a special program on this station, the Morning Cloud Television, that will be bringing to our attention buried truth, life giving wisdom, the deep things that God ordained for our glory before the world began, things that has to do with our Christian faith, the season that we find ourselves, and the different issues of life that are facing us. Listen. The Bible says, what is life? Life is just like a vapor that appears and vanishes within a short period of time. Within the time it appears and the time it will vanish, it's very important that a lot of things be brought to our attention. So that by the time we'll be vanishing, we will not vanish into hell, we will vanish into heaven where we spend eternal rest with Christ. The Morning Cloud Television. The nation's our mandate. Making the much needed difference in a terminal generation. Your name, your name is a miracle. Your name is a comforter. Your name is a my God, Jesus, your name, your name is a miracle, your name is a Comforter, your name is a mighty God, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the mercies you have given us today to assemble again at your word from our different homes. This is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Your name has been highly lifted above every name, that at your name every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. Therefore I decree, O oh God, that your Lordship permeate everywhere right now that you bring every knee under the subject, under the power of your Lordship, that every knee will become a subject of your Lordship right now in the name of Jesus, that your word will penetrate into our hearts, into our souls, into our spirits. You will execute your will, oh God, even in this special session. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to welcome you this very morning to a wonderful session again. We call it Church in the House. Coming to you courtesy of the Cry of the Spirit Ministries located here in Nairobi, Kenya. We meet at 60 Hotel, Kenyatta Avenue, Nairobi. And uh, by God's grace, next Sunday, which is the 23rd of May, we are going to resume our service after the lockdown, our service starts at 9, sorry, 8.30 a.m. at 6.30 hotel. But this morning, we are going to hear a word from the Lord. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed 
out of the mouth of God. The preceding word remain the, the prescription of our creator for our sustainers on the face of the earth. And uh, I want to begin by looking at reading the book of Psalm 101. So I want you to open with me to Psalm 101. And uh, as we lay the foundation for what, the th for what God wants us to hear today. Psalm 101 verse 1 says, I will sing of mercy and justice. To you, O Lord, I will praise. I will sing praises. I will behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Look at that statement again. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. You see, it is what goes on in your house that determines what happens in your life. Don't forget that. It is what goes on in your house that determines what happens in your life. You look at what David said here. He said, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. A lot of us, we walk within our houses with corrupt hearts. People s sit in their houses and conceive very wicked things or practice very wicked things. For instance, a house that is full of strife and rivalry will produce lives that are shattered and scattered. Sometimes you hear uh, uh, stories from children of broken homes, children that are born in homes where there's always constant conflict, husband and wife fighting and everything. They cannot see peace in that home. Now a child that comes from such a home is going to live a very scattered life, except God comes in to intervene. So what you do in your house it amends what happens in your life. You must understand that. That is why David now said, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. That is why sessions like this that we call church in the house, we are bringing the word of the Lord to you right there in your house so that you begin to walk in a perfect way. You begin to walk with a perfect heart in your house so that as God begins to happen in your house, good will begin to manif manifest in your life. I repeat, as God begins to happen in your house, good will begin to manifest in your life. People don't really understand the power of their houses. I mean, their residence to their life. Where you live, where you sleep, it plays a major role when it comes to things that happen in your life. So that is why I want to admonish you to take the word of the Lord this morning that is meeting you right there at your house to teach you how to conduct yourself as a human being. And look at one other scripture I want to show you, Psalm 92. Psalm 92, verse 10. He said, but my horn you have exalted like a wild horse. Wild horse, they represent the anointing, post apostolic anointing there. He said, I have been anointed with fresh oil. So this morning, God will anoint you with fresh oil. When we say fresh oil, not olive oil. We're talking about the oil of the Holy Spirit. He said, you shall be anointed with the oil of the Holy Spirit. The oil of the Holy Spirit is contained in the present truth. The present truth, the proceeding word of God is a container of the oil of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, as you hear the word of the Lord, a fresh anointing is coming upon you right there in your house. So that you come to the point in your house where you begin to walk within your house with a perfect heart. Hallelujah to Jesus. You see, people who walk within their house with the influences of pornography, they end up not even having proper marriages. That's why you must take this service very serious. That is coming to you right there in your house. Verse 11 says, My eyes also have seen my desire on my enemies. My ears hear my desire on the wicked who rise up against me. Verse 12 now says, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. 
when this scripture was written, the temple of Solomon was not yet built. That should not tell us the house of God is not a building. The house of God is the place of God's manifest presence. That tells me your house can be the house of God this morning. When the presence of God manifests in your house, it becomes the house of God. That is why when that man's Zion atmosphere, which is the presence of God, is created where you live, and it begins to determine what happened in your house, what happened in your residence, then you begin to see how your life will begin to take a good turn. You begin to enjoy favor. You begin to enjoy peace. Because what is happening in your house is the house of God, the manifest presence of God. That tells me my residence can be the house of God if I allow the presence of God to manifest. So I want to encourage you this morning to maintain the decorum of a church service because we are having church in the house. So maintain the decorum of a church service and participate. Call a friend to call a friend. Tell them we are live right now. Let us participate in this very service coming to you from the cry of the Spirit Ministries. This morning, I'll be preaching on what I titled the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's actually a prophetic contemplation this morning that will bring us to a, 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 a place of spiritual understanding where we begin to tap the most or benefit from the grace of God in dimensions that we have never benefited before. Because we have heard the word grace, 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 grace is the name of people, is the name of churches, is the name of preachers, is the name of places and everything. The word grace is so common and um, it has been so polluted that people don't really understand what the grace of God is. Because if we really understand what the grace of God is, wherever the word grace is mentioned, there will be no practice of sin if we really understand what grace is. So that is why we're going to, to look at this wonderful contemplation titled The Grace of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me begin by sharing with us the prophetic reason for this contemplation. You see, we live in seasons that are akin to the days of Noah. Jesus says something in the book of Matthew, chapter 24. Sorry, yes, he spoke about the days of Noah. And in chapter 23, he has decreed war upon hypocrisy, war upon the Pharisees from their hypo hypocrisy. One, beauty, one beautiful thing I see about Jesus in the Bible, he never decreed war on a sinner. He decreed war on a, on a hypocrite. Because a sinner who is not a hypocrite can easily be saved. But a, a sinner who is a hypocrite cannot be saved. You get my point? So, so, so but then, then in chapter 24, he began to unfold what we call in theology, Bible prophecy. And if you look at Matthew 24, it contained a whole lot of stuff that even happening right now that we live in. Let's look at some of the verses there in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. One of the major things that Jesus said that day, which is happening right now, is verse 7. He said, for nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. Right now, we are dealing with pestilence. The, co the COVID-19 is a pestilence. Now, if you go further in chapter, 20, chapter 36, Jesus says, but of that day and hour, no one knows talking about the day of the second coming. You see, one thing that every human being must understand is this. Either you believe the Bible or not, whatever is written in this book is going to come to pass. Not believing in it places you in an awkward situation. Arguing with this book places you in an awkward situation because Everything I am reading this morning and the things contained in this book are coming to pass. The earth as we know it will be terminated, either you believe it or not. The earth as we know it, there are seven metamorphoses of the earth prophesied in scriptures. And we have seen five. 
We have seen five metamorphoses of the earth in Bible prophecy. We are getting close to the sixth metamorphosis. And the sixth one is the earth that will be consumed with fire. So we're getting close to it. So whether you believe it or not, the earth as we know it will be no more. Will be no more. You see, when we say history, the word history simply means God's story. That's that history. That word being with capital letter H. His story. History. So it, it, Bible prophecy is actually detecting history. I don't believe it or not. The calendar of the earth has been determined. Do you know the person who got the revelation of the calendar of the earth? Nebuchadnezzar. He got the revelation of God's calendar for the earth and things that will come to an end. So, so, so God did not leave us in prophetic ignorance. We are the ones that choose to be ignorant by either disbelieving this book or not studying it to understand what is there. We allow our problems to, to, to form the center stage of our lives. So we prefer uh, hearing things that will help us get married, help us have some money, help us uh, travel to the US, travel to Canada, look, look for green card and all kinds of card. So any preacher who is not preaching a message that align with our need, we don't listen to him. You see, we have placed ourselves in an awkward situation. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all this nonsense we are looking for shall be added. When you look for what is not lost, you will never find it because it is not lost. It is not lost. It's there. Do you understand me? So, so Bible prophecy is what is determining the events. And Jesus said, but of that day and hour of his coming, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. So any prophet will come up and say, Jesus is coming to that day, is coming to that time. They are lying. No one knows where the, what, when he's coming. But do you know why God reserved that? God reserved that to himself. Because the last hour of his coming is going to create a prophetic awareness on the face of the earth. And there's going to be a generation over whom death has no power in that very last hour. A generation that will conquer death in that very last hour. It is that generation that will be aware within that last hour of his return. But there's a place I'm taking you to in verse 37. He said, but as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. That means proud or, or when they were getting close to the termination of that earth. The need of human beings formed the center stage of their life. In another word, they became more need conscious. None of them was God conscious. And that is what is happening today. We are so need conscious. We are not God conscious. As a result, we allow the spirits of lawlessness to, to even give us miracles. Because Satan will meet your earthly need to terminate your eternal destiny. You can write that down. It's going to help you. Satan will meet your earthly need to terminate your eternal destiny. That is why it is a generation that will not be need conscious that will escape the sword of the spirit of wickedness and lawlessness. Are you understanding me? But we are right in the days of Noah. Now, one of the major things that happened in the days of Noah, if you go back to the book of Genesis, chapter 6, which I mentioned earlier, let's go back there. Genesis chapter 6, let's see one of the major things that happened in the days of Noah. One of the major things that happened in the days of Noah. Genesis chapter 6 from verse, let me just read because of time, maybe from verse two, um, 3. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. If we should run through certain things that happened in the generation of Noah. Number one, there was a shortening of days. There was a shortening of days. There was a short, a reduction of lifespan. Do you realize that today people are dying young as never before? Look at obituaries. Do you see people that even get to a hundred and something years today? All deaths mostly are from between 20s and 50s, roughly 60s a little. 
a lot of youths are dying. There's a reduction of, of, of lifespan today by virtue of the wickedness of men. Look at the next thing. He now said, there were giants on the earth, verse 4, in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the dust of men, and they bore children uh, to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. He's talking about the Nephilim. He's talking about unclean spirit. Angels God sent to teach people righteousness, and the people now, and the angels began to sleep with the daughters of men, and, and that is one of the stuff we are seeing today, which I can't go into now, because I'm taking you somewhere. And the Bible says in verse 5, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually, and the Lord, and the Lord was sorry that he has made man on the earth, and he grieved in his heart, either you believe it or not, there are people that are making the heart of God to grieve because of their wickedness. So the Lord said, I will destroy man what I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and beasts of the earth, for I am sorry that I have made them. Look at verse 8. That was what I was taking you to. Verse 8 says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That means in the midst of this destruction, in the midst of perpetual wickedness, there was a generation that chooses to separate itself from the wickedness of, of its time. Noah came from a lineage of Seth, a lineage that began to call upon the name of the Lord, a lineage that was a replacement for Cain. So when the lineage of Cain was filling the earth with wickedness, the lineage of Noah set themselves apart. They hid themselves under the word of the Lord. They decided to live right in a perverse and crooked generation, and they attracted a special grace of God upon their lives. And what does that tell us? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be our hiding place this end time. Listen to me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be our hiding place this end time. And the Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. No matter what is happening on planet Earth, may you find grace in the eyes of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. No matter what may be happening in your family, May you find grace in the eyes of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, having laid foundation for what I want to share, let me now show you something. But before that, write this down if you are writing. Finding grace, finding grace in the eyes of the Lord begins with understanding what grace is. Finding grace in the eyes of the Lord today begins with understanding what grace is. So a generation that do not understand what the grace of God is will not find grace in God's sight. In another word, grace will not be a hiding place for that generation. In this critical season that we find ourselves, season that are akin, that are akin with the generation of Noah, with the, our hiding place is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for us to hide under the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we must understand what grace is. In God's kingdom, it is understanding that makes you stand. If you don't understand, you can't stand. And one thing you should also understand, write down is this. Number two, you cannot find in God's kingdom what you do not understand. In another word, in God's kingdom, whatever you don't understand, you cannot assess. In God's kingdom, whatever you don't understand, you can't assess. Here is somebody who is sick and the person needs healing. And the person doesn't understand how the power of God works. He doesn't understand how God brings healing. That person will remain sick, even if God wants to heal the person. Here is somebody who is under witchcraft oppression. And the person doesn't understand how to obtain dominion 
over the powers of darkness. The person will not assess the dominion that has been given. In the kingdom of God, you cannot find anything you don't understand. The, in another word, you cannot assess a treasure you don't understand in God's kingdom. You cannot assess a treasure. That is why when Jesus came, one of the major things he did, he allowed the disciples to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. He said, to you it is given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Because if you understand the mysteries of the kingdom, you will be able to assess the treasures of the kingdom. If you understand the mysteries of the kingdom, you can assess the treasures of the kingdom. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is a major treasure of God's kingdom that we can never assess without understanding. You see, one of the major things you will see if you come under what we call the apostolic anointing, which is not a title, which is not in bottles of oil or whatever, you will begin to recognize the works of the spirit of lawlessness. One of the major things that the spirit of lawlessness does is to confuse us on matters that, we, that have to do with the treasures of God's kingdom. By raising people we call preachers to pollute the gospel, mutilate the gospel, read their own ideas into God's word. And as you now sit down and listen to a message that is a product of someone's idea, it will produce nothing in your life. It will not bring you to the place of understanding the mysteries of the kingdom and assessing the treasures of the kingdom. Do you know why the devil, one of his major uh, activity on earth is to pollute the gospel? Is to raise people to begin to preach the gospel to make money? is to make money the goal for preaching the gospel in the heart of some people. Because when you put money ahead of God, everything you are doing in Christ becomes desecrated. I repeat, when you put money ahead of God, any, everything you are doing in Christ becomes desecrated. That is why the Bible says we cannot serve God and mammon at the same time. The love of money is the root of all evil. It brings all kinds of evil. It, on, it opens evil portals all over people. That's why you see people who are driven by the love of money, they're always in conflict. You see their life being cut short. You see diseases breaking forth. They don't care about anything. They don't work in mercy. They don't work in love. All they want is how to get the money. Listen carefully. If Satan confuses us, about what the grace of God is, we are finished. Because the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is the fuel of our faith. It's not just a hiding place. It's the fuel of our faith. Just as cars need fuel to run, so we need the grace of God in our life to run. Just as cars need oil, so we need the oil of God's grace to run. So you will realize that in this season, where things that are beyond man are happening, if we don't hide under the grace of God, we'll be consumed by their happenings. So we must understand the grace of God. We must understand what the grace of God is. And people have gotten all kinds of definition of God's grace and all of that stuff. To me, understanding God's grace begins with understanding the prophetic purpose of God's grace. That is where it begins in. And let me begin to get some things down here. The prophetic purpose. The prophetic purpose of God's grace. If we don't understand the prophetic purpose of God's grace, there is no way that we will understand God's grace by his definition. You see, there is grace by theological definitions. There's grace by human definition and all kinds of things. But getting it by God's definition 
is the only way we can assess the treasure. Is the only way that we can assess the treasure. So if we will understand grace and stand in grace, it all begins with understanding its prophetic purpose. Simply, one can say the grace of God is one, the pardon of God, two, the power of God, three, some people have said the favor of God, which is okay, and some have said the some have said the mercy of God, because everything falls into pardon. The mercy of God, people have said what grace is. That's the way grace manifests. You get my point? And grace is actually Jesus himself. You get my point? But we're not going to get to this point today. We're going to see his manifest. We'll see grace as the pardon, the power, the favor, and all of that stuff. So because it takes, when it takes the pardon of God, for us to make heaven. And the pardon of God is attracted by the repentance of men. When men do not repent, you see, this is an aspect that a lot of us Christians we miss. Repentance precedes pardoning in God's kingdom. And the gospel of grace has been so presented that people don't realize that it is repentance that precedes pardoning. That is why when Jesus came, he was preaching the gospel of repentance. When John the Baptist, who came ahead of him, came, he preached the gospel of repentance. So one thing you should understand is this. If you have not made up your mind to stop walking in your wicked ways, you will never obtain pardon. You will never obtain pardon. Let me just begin from what you understand. The pardon of God, which is grace. That means we can't put grace to work if we don't work in repentance. We can't put grace to work if we don't work in repentance. So the pardon of God is unlocked by the repentance of men. Now the power of God, which is also God's grace, is unlocked by submitting to Jesus himself. The, but when we submit to God, when we submit to Christ, we unleash power on it. Then another one, we talk about the favor of God, which is the grace of God. So the favor of God comes on us when we align with his ways. When you walk in God's will, you enjoy God's favor. When you walk in God's will, you enjoy God's favor. That's why we must understand the prophetic purpose of grace. Because when we understand it, then we we'll begin to unlock it. We we'll begin to live in it. It becomes our hiding place. It becomes our hiding place. And when we also say grace is the mercy of God, how do you unlock mercy? I go back to the first thing I said. There's no way you can unlock mercy when you continue in your wickedness. So now, now these, are the, the, these are the things some of us have been taught to be grace. But we have to go deeper because these are days of obtaining deeper understanding of kingdom mysteries. So that, like I said one of those times, things have become so bad on planet Earth that if we don't hide ourselves in God, it will be terrible. When we hide ourselves to hide ourselves in God, we must understand the depths of God. These are not days of listening to shallow messages. These are not days of hearing messages on firstborn, redemption of firstborn, redemption of first fruit, things that are not even part of the gospel. These are not days of hearing messages of spirit husband, uh, how to sow a seed and get this miracle, how to unlock the other breakthrough. That is nonsense. These are days of looking for what the Bible called the mysteries of the kingdom, things that were ordained for our glory, the depths of God. If you don't go deep in God these days, Satan will uproot you from your marriage, uproot you from your, from your financial uh, 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 plenty. He will uproot you from, even from this earth. We need to go deep in God. Our roots, 
The root of our faith must go deep in God these days. Because the days are dangerous. If the root of our faith don't go deep in God, we'll begin to wither a life. You can write it down. If the root of my faith don't go deep in God this end time, I will wither in life. Every tree that is not deep rooted will wither. Do you know why the oasis is what you see in the, in the, in the desert? Because they go deep. So if your roots don't go deep in these critical seasons that we find ourselves, you will find your life withering. You will wither financially. You will wither maritally. You, if you are a minister as a pastor, you will see your ministry withering and you go back to the village because your root is not deep in God. And f- the root of your faith is not deep. And for the root of our faith to be deep, we need to understand the deep things of God. Look at how Paul put it. That is why we are going to the depth in our understanding of what faith is. Go to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at what the Bible says in verse 10. It says, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yet the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So if you go back to verse 10 again, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. He has the deep things of God. So if we don't get our knowledge, our faith rooted in the deep things of God, we are going to wither in life. You will see yourself withering. Nothing in your life will be working. Are you understanding me? So that's why we are going into the deeper dimension of our understanding of what the grace of God is. Like I said, we have known grace as the pardon, the power, the favor, the mercy of God. And some of us have known the grace of God as Jesus himself, because the Bible called Jesus the grace of God, but um, but we're going to see the grace of God in the light of the prophetic purpose of grace. If we understand the prophetic purpose of of grace, we're going to enjoy the best of God's grace in our lives. If we understand the prophetic purpose, because in God's kingdom, prophetic purpose is the driving force of things. Prophetic purpose is the driving force of, of things. Uh, let, me, let me show you a scripture. Look at the book of Proverbs. Let's read the book of Proverbs chapter 29. Let's see some, something there. Proverbs chapter 29. Prophetic purpose is the driving force of things in God's kingdom. If you don't understand the prophetic purpose for marriage, for example, you destroy your marital life. If you don't understand the prophetic purpose of finances, you destroy your financial life. Prophetic purpose of grace is there. Look at Proverbs chapter 29. A very beautiful scripture that is common, but I just want us to read it. Proverbs 29 verse 18. It says, where there is no revelation. In another world, the rock can just put it where there is no vision. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. But happy is he who keeps the law. In another world, where there is no prophetic revelation. Where there's, no prof- where there's no revelation of prophetic purposes, of things in God's kingdom, people cast off restraint. People touch, break forth. They, they, they don't keep to the restraints of the Almighty God. They tap into the spirit of lawlessness and then begin to get things done by the spirit of lawlessness. So when we understand the prophetic purpose of grace, God's vision for grace. When we understand God's vision for grace, we are going to find grace in his side. We will hide under the, the, the refuge of his grace in critical seasons that we we'll find ourselves. So that is why I want to take us there. But look at what the Bible says in the book of Habakkuk. Let's read Habakkuk again. What do we do? when we find the prophetic vision of things in God's kingdom. Habakkuk chapter 2. 
Look at what it says, Habakkuk chapter 2. It says, then the Lord answered and said to me, write the vision. <laughs> write the prophetic purpose as it's being revealed to you. Write the vision. Make it plain on tablets that you may run who read it. What you make plain, make, make plain means understand. Write it clearly so that you can understand. Now that tells me when I understand the prophetic purpose of grace, I will be able to run with grace in life. The grace of God will, will, be, will find full expression in my life. The grace of God will find full expression in your life if you understand the prophetic purpose of grace. He said, write the vision. Write its prophetic purpose. Make it plain on tablet. That means understand it. Understand it that he may run who reads it. That means what you understand will generate a spiritual momentum in your spirit and it will help you run with it. You see, our lives will be useless if there's no grace of God in our lives. Our lives will be useless if there's no grace in it. I mean the grace of God. So we must now understand the prophetic purpose of grace. And when we understand, it will now give us the definition. It will tell us what the grace of God is. Now, I'm going to unfold four of the seven prophetic purpose, purposes of grace. I will unfold just four because of time constraint. Now, the first prophetic purpose of grace, this may shock some of you, the first prophetic purpose of grace is to make us heaven worthy. That is the first prophetic purpose of grace. Is to make us heaven worthy. That is the first prophetic purpose. <laughs> that is why any grace you say you are under, that is not making you heaven worthy. It's a scam. It's not grace. It's the spirit of lawlessness using the language of God, using the labels of God's kingdom to package dangerous things and deliver to you. The first prophetic purpose of grace is to make the lost man heavenwardy. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace. Now the justification is not just a spiritual legal pronouncement over our lives when we have turned from the wicked ways to, uh, I mean, to righteous ways. If you connect that to the book of Titus, which maybe we may read if there's time, you will realize that that justification, Titus chapter 3 from verse from verse 3, you will realize that the justification is a product of a regeneration that have taken place in our spirit. And what is it that regenerates us? It's the grace of God. What's the meaning of we are saved by grace? What do you understand by we are saved by grace? It simply means we are made heaven worthy by grace. That's the meaning of we are saved by grace. You, you see somebody living in adultery, and you try to talk to the person to live right, the person says, no, we are saved by grace. If you have been saved by grace, you will not be an adulterer because no adulterer will make heaven. Is there in scriptures. If you have been saved by grace, you will not be a liar. S being saved by grace simply means being regenerated, being transformed to become heaven worthy by the grace of God. That now tells us what is the grace of God? It is that enabling power of God that makes a man heavenward. That enabling power of God 
that makes a man heaven worthy. When he meets a hallowed, he will transform her to a honorable woman. When he meets a liar, he transforms the person to a person of truth. When he meets a criminal, he can transform the person's life and the person will become one of the warriors of God on the face of the earth. Grace, Grace met Saul, who was a terrorist, going about killing in the name of religion. And when the grace of God met him, he became Paul the apostle. When grace meets you, Grace makes you heaven worthy. Any grace that does not make you heaven worthy is a scam. And we have a lot of graces, if I may use that word, among us today in the church that have made people heaven unworthy. From the pulpit to the pew, if we should speak the truth to ourselves, how many of us pastors are going to make heaven? How many of us members are going to make heaven? The kind of grace we are under leaves us in our heaven unworthy state. It leaves us in a state that makes God weep in heaven, makes God to like regret making man. When the Bible says Noah found grace in the, in the sight of God, he, 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 he found that would separate him from that wicked generation and keep him in a heaven worthy state. People have said God can use anybody. I'm so sorry, God cannot use anybody. God can use those he has sanctified by his grace. Those he has worked on. God will pick an, an unusable person and pour his grace on that person. And the person will be sanctified and become usable. Are you understanding me? So this is the first purpose of grace. And let me take you through certain scriptures. You get my point? It makes us heaven worthy and there is something i call the plague of heaven unworthiness which has plagued the church today and uh, it's so sad that some of us don't camp in certain scriptures i want to read right now like me i the, the scriptures i want to read now these, these are scriptures i camp on and i lead everybody to come on that's why i read them over and over so matthew chapter 7 verse, verse 21 Look at what the Bible says. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, listen carefully. We have man's definition of God's will. And we have God's definition of God's will. The Bible says making heaven is not by reciting one sinner's poem. Making heaven is by doing the will of the Father. You could recite a thousand sinner's prayer. But if you are not doing the will of God, you are not going to make heaven. Now, what is it that makes us do God's will? The grace of God working in our lives and bringing us to the place of submission. People do not know that grace brings you to the cross. Grace brings you to the cross. It brings you to the place of submission where you submit your will on God's will. That's why a people under grace die daily. A people under God's grace, they die daily. You don't find them in this sin or do that sin. You don't find them living in sin and excusing themselves. They die daily. People under grace die daily because the authentic grace of God brings you to the cross. The place where you crucify your flesh. You crucify your carnal desires. You crucify the flesh for the spirit to take residence on your inside. You see, doing the will of God is not cheap. It's not cheap. Do you know that in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, if you read it, abstaining from sexual immorality is the will of God. So that now tells me if we are not abstaining from sexual immorality, we are not doing the will of God. We are not doing the will of God. And if you look at us in church today, sexual immorality has now become a lifestyle. In fact, I remember a young girl who ran to me one day complaining that the elder in their church, this is 18 year old, elder of 60 something, want to sleep with 18 year old. And she rushed to her pastor and said, look at people are harassing me. And the pastor asked her, are you not a woman? Are you not a woman? Want to get married? Obviously, the pastor is also doing it. They have enthroned sexual immorality. And they now see the complaint of this little girl as odd. So today, if you are sexually pure, you are the odd one. 
I'm not saying in the world, in the church, from the pulpit to the pew. If you are sexually pure, you are the odd one today. And they say they are under grace. They are not under grace, they are under a scam from the gate of hell. Are you understanding me? Because the Bible says abstaining from sexual immorality is the will of God. And the grace of God will make you do the will of God. You see, if you are under grace and you are not heaven worthy, grace will trouble you with convictions of sin, convictions of judgment, conviction of righteousness. Grace will trouble you. Nobody under grace can live in sin successfully. Nobody under grace, I repeat, can live in sin successfully because the first prophetic purpose of grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, is to keep us heaven worthy. I remember in those days, in our little church, then when we gave our life to Christ, we used to sing this song, Give me grace to follow, abundant grace to follow, I need your grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Give me grace to follow. Why are we telling God that? Because we know if we have sufficient grace, we will overcome sin. If we have sufficient grace, we will have dominion in the days of temptation. If we have sufficient grace in our lives, we will be kept heavenwardy. Any grace that is not rebuking you, in your sinfulness is a scam. Because the first prophetic purpose of grace is to keep us in a heaven-worthy state. And look at what the Bible says. It said, people that are in an in heaven unworthy state, it said, it said, many will come to me in that day, verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, verse 22 of Matthew chapter 7, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name. And done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Grace will never allow a man to practice lawlessness. Never. I repeat, the grace of God will never allow a man or a woman to to practice lawlessness. The grace of God will never allow you to go into a marriage that is not God's will. The grace of God will never allow you to go into a business that is built on lies and deceit just because of the money. The grace of God will never allow you to be comfortable in your wicked ways. It's impossible. Listen, any grace that keeps you in your wicked ways is a scam. It's not the grace of God. It's not the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a scam. It's a fabricated grace by religious men. It's not the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the first prophetic purpose of grace is to kill the virus of heaven unworthiness. First in the church, then in the world. Do you know why the gospel is called the gospel of grace? It simply means the gospel that transforms a sinner into a saint. The gospel that makes a lost sinner heaven worthy. That is the meaning of the gospel of grace, my friend. It's not talking about the gospel of tolerance to, ev to evil. People call the gospel of accommodation, accommodation, where you accommodate evil as the gospel of grace. They call a gospel that tolerates sin and wickedness, the gospel of grace. The gospel of grace is a gospel that transforms our moral nature. The gospel of grace, I repeat, is a gospel that transforms our moral nature. That now tells me if a church is going by the name grace, then we should find the most righteous people in that place. We should find people that God's grace have worked on. Harlots that have been transformed. Liars that have been transformed. Adulterers that have been transformed. But if your church is going by the name grace and you find all kinds of wickedness, it's a scam. It's not the grace of God. The devil used that word grace to pull people to himself and keep them in heaven unworthy state. Keep them in broad ways that lead to destruction. When the grace of God meets you, it takes you from the broad way and, and brings you into the narrow way that leads to eternal life. Look at what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 again, verse 13. It says, enter by the narrow gate. 
For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. A lot of them go in by it, say they are under the grace of God. How can you be under the grace of God and you are in the broad way that leads to destruction? The broad way that leads to destruction is a path where you don't keep to the commandments of God. It's a path where you don't follow the ways of God, but you are called the name of God. It's a path where you are not in interested in sound doctrine. It's a path that you want to keep following your traditions. For instance, our generation have become so morally bankrupt that even preachers tell you that there's nothing wrong with polygamy. And they cite David. They cite Solomon. They don't go to the original in Genesis chapter 1 and 2 where God created one man and one woman. So the spirit of lawlessness will tell you there's nothing wrong with one woman marrying many men or one man marrying many women. There's nothing wrong with it. That's what the spirit of lawlessness will tell you because the first person to launch assault on the marriage institution was the family of Cain. The lineage of Cain. The lineage of lawlessness. That's why if you look at the lineage of Cain, they launch assault on the marriage institution. One man, two women. The lineage of Seth. They kept to the structure of God. One man, one woman. You must understand that the greatest enemy we face today is the spirit of lawlessness that, that pervert the ways of God. But the grace of God is there to neutralize the spirit of lawlessness by opening our eyes to see the standards of God and giving us what it takes to uphold the standard. When the grace of God hits you as a second wife, you are going to leave that marriage when the grace of God hits you. You don't need to ask questions. When the genuine grace of God hits you, because the grace of God brings you into alignment with Christ. When the grace of God hits you, if that husband was stolen, you return him back to where you carry him. If that woman was stolen, you return the woman back. Because when grace hits you, great, if grace, grace of God evokes righteousness. It aligns us with the will of God. And the Bible says in verse 14, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And they are few who find it. That tells us only few people are under the grace of God. Only few people are under the grace of God. And why does God release his grace on us? Because he said, difficult is the way. When you want to follow God, things will be difficult with you, my friend. And God will have to pour his grace upon you to enable you overcome the difficult things. Are you understanding me? Because in the broad way, things are not difficult. In the broad way, the flesh is comforted. In the broad way, come on, you find money, you do not work for, you got it by stealing. In the broad way, corruption prospers you. In the broad way, iniquity prospers you. But when you get to the narrow way, you are not permitted to be corrupt. You are not permitted to work in iniquity. You are, you are not permitted to hold the things you stole. The grace of God will not allow that to happen. You must return back what you stole under the grace of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let me take you forward because of our time. Let me take you forward. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Titus, chapter 2, about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, making us heaven worthy. Titus, chapter 2. Look at what it said in verse 11. It said, For the grace of God that brings salvation, deliverance from sin, from heaven unworthiness, from the that brings salvation, has appeared to all men. Doing what? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, in and godly in the present age. In another world, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that brings salvation works in us. To become heaven worthy. Because if you look at the next verse in verse 13, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So when you come under the genuine grace of God, it makes you heaven worthy by teaching you 
not fooling you, but teaching you to deny ungodliness, to deny worldly lust. That is talking about the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the, the pride of life. It, it teaches you to deny worldly loss. You see, the grace of God terminates our friendship with the world. Because the Bible says friendship with the world is enmity with God. It terminates our friendship with the world. The grace of God makes sure we don't live a worldly Christian life. A worldly Christian life is a life controlled by worldly lust. You see that in the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, that says, Love not the world, not that the things that are in the world. For whoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What are the things in the world? The lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the deceitfulness of riches and all of that stuff. So when the grace of God comes to make us heaven worthy, it teaches us to be to fight ungodliness. It teaches us to fight what loss. It teaches us to fight anything that will make it impossible for us to make heaven when we close our eyes in death. It helps us to understand the judgments of God and it transforms our expectations. It will make the coming of Christ our greatest expectation. He said, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed. So the grace of God redeems us from every lawless deed to make us heaven worthy. So if you say you are under grace and you are still involved in lawless deeds, you are not under grace. You are in a scam. Look at what has happened to us today. The shame we are bringing to the body of Christ, those of us that call ourselves Christians. You see a Christian lady going to the same church, snatching another Christian lady's husband in the same church. I mean in the same church. In the same church, in the same church, and we say we are under grace. In the same church, lawless deeds. People want to get married. They don't follow the ways of God in, get, in getting married. That is why as soon as they get married, the marriage crashes. Because any marriage you go into without following the established ways of righteousness will crash over time. So do you see the kind of things we call ourselves born again? And yet we are involved in lawless deeds. The grace of God comes to redeem us from lawless deeds and purify us. Hallelujah. He said, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. If I am under grace, I will be redeemed from my lawless deeds. I will not allow any lawless deed in my life to take root in me. I will use his grace that I am under to fight every lawless deed. It's a lawless deed when you snatch another person's husband in the same church. It's a lawless deed. Even though in another church, it's a lawless deed. It's a lawless deed when you don't keep yourself in holiness. It's a lawless deed when you lie, when you walk in craftiness. It's a lawless deed when you sign documents, things you never work for, and you claim the money for it from your office, and you say you're a Christian. It's a lawless deed when you call yourself a Christian, and yet in politics, you have stole everything in government and taken everything to church. It's a lawless deed. It's a lawless deed. God does not receive stolen money, my friend. It is pastors that receive it. It's a lawless deed to lie as a child of God, to, to, to walk in corruption is a lawless deed. That shows that grace has not worked on you. You have not submitted to the grace of God to work on you. Because for the grace of God to work on us, we must submit ourselves to the grace of God to work on us. Our will must be brought under the will of God's word for the grace of God to work for to work on us. So you must understand that the first prophetic purpose of grace is to make you and I heaven worthy. By redeeming us from every lawless deed, purifying us to become God's special people, zealous for good works. And look at what Paul told Timothy. Sorry, told Titus, speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. 
Let no one despise you. Rebuke with all authority. We pastors have failed in that area. We don't rebuke lawlessness with all authority. We rather fellowship with lawlessness because of the financial gains that lawlessness brings to us. You have an elder who is an adulterer, you will say nothing to that elder. But any day the elder did not bring tight, you, you lift up your voice and begin to shout. You come on their cause. I repeat, any grace you are under that is not making you heaven worthy is a scam. Look at one scripture that should always cause you to tremble each time you read. And I know many Christians don't even go to those scriptures. Revelation chapter 21, go there. These are scriptures you must be camping on as a child of God. Revelation 21. Look at what the Bible says in verse 7. Re Revelation 21, 7. He who overcomes, that is he who has been made heavenwardy. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. Overcome what? Overcome lawless deeds. Overcome sin. Iniquity and trespass by the ability of God's grace. He said, he who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable. This is the Bible description of people that are heaven unworthy. He said, the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral. These are people that are heaven unworthy. Sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So when you die this way, as described in this book, you are not going to make heaven. Grace is to make sure that you don't die as an unbeliever. You don't die as an abominable person. You don't die as a murderer. You don't die as a sexually immoral. You don't die as a sorcerer. You don't die as an adulterer. You don't die as a liar. That is what grace is deployed to do. That is the first prophetic purpose of grace. To make sure that we don't die as liars. To transform our moral nature. To make sure that we come to the place of walking in truth. That is the first prophetic purpose of grace. Any grace that is not making you heaven worthy is a scam. Go to the another scripture. I want to show you that you should be camping on. Revelation 22. Revelation 22 verse 14. It says, blessed are those who do his commandments. So grace will propel you to do God's commandment. Blessed are those who do his commandment that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gate into the city. Verse 15. But outside are dogs. Now, Tango is the Bible that called them dog. They will not say this pastor is calling people dog. He said outside are the dogs. Who is a dog? The Bible definition of a dog, if you read the book of 2 Peter chapter 2, a dog is that person who goes back to their old life. You say you are born again, but you are still doing the wicked things you used to do. You still masturbate. You still fornicate. You still lie. You still do all kinds of... You still take alcohol. You get involved in drunkenness and wickedness. And you say you are born again. Nobody who is filled with the Holy Ghost will do all those things. Listen, the Bible says outside are the dogs. Those who go back to their own life, they are the dogs. He said, but outside are the dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever love and practice a lie. People who fit this biblical description, they have not been worked on by the grace of God. They have resisted the grace of God. They have refused to submit themselves to God's grace and they have kept themselves in a state state of heaven unworthiness. There are two destinations after death. It's either heaven or hell. How you handle the grace of God is what determines your destination after death. Let's go to the next prophetic purpose of grace. The second prophetic purpose of God's grace is to make us Earthly, make us earthly relevant. 
Now, when I say earthly re relevant, it has nothing to do with earthly relevance by man's definition of earthly relevance. No. Grace makes us earthly relevant by God's definition of relevance. What is God's definition of relevance? Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 tells us. Let's begin with that. Matthew 5 13. Look at what it says. It says, you are the salt of the earth. It didn't say we should use salt in prayer. No. Using salt in prayer is sorcery. <laughs> it says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. So the first description of earthly relevance in God's perspective is salt. What do we use salt to do? We use salt to season our meals. Salt is also used for preservation. That tells you if we become heaven worthy, we become the preservatives of the earth. One heaven, heaven worthy person in a family can preserve that family from generational causes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I repeat, one heaven-worthy Christian can preserve his or her entire family from generational causes. How do I know? Paul was traveling in a boat in, Matthew 20, sorry, in Acts 27. And the boat was in serious danger. That is likened to your family in serious danger. And Paul bowed down his knee in prayer and prayed. And the angel appeared to Paul. What did he say to him? The Lord has delivered everybody in this boat to you. So if you are heaven worthy, you will be earthly relevant by God's definition. You become God's preservative in your family. I've said it before. If one family member can stand before the devil and bring the whole house into curses, you can stand before God and bring the whole house into blessings. If you are heaven worthy, you don't need to take a prophet to go out or put a charm or raise some altar of sacrifice, give some money to some stupid, greedy men of God. No, just be heaven worthy and you will generate an anointing in that house. You will generate a grace in that house that will make sure that whatever is cutting the lives of people in that home is arrested by the power of God in your life. That is God's definition of earthly relevance. That is God's definition of earthly relevance. He now went on in verse 14 and said, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in that house. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, hallelujah, and glorify your father. In heaven. So by God's definition, earthly, his, his definition of earthly relevance is we being the salt of the earth, is we also being the light of the world. That means you should be able to lift up the standard of righteousness in your family, in your office, in your nation, if you're a political leader. Lift up the standard of righteousness and let people know how to conduct their lives in the right way. Sadly speaking, many of us that call ourselves Christians, we don't have a good testimony before our families because our characters are devilish. They can't see the Christ that you profess. You have become more wicked than you used to be. Now that you say you are born again, you now pray that your father should die. Your mother should die. Your sister should die. Now, before you were born again, you were not praying that your mother should die. But now that your own born again has made you a spiritual assassin, how will your parents love you? How will your siblings and relatives love you? Your mouth has become so loud. There's no respect because you speak in tongues. Your born again is smelling. It is not the light. You are not the light of the world. You are, not the, you are a pain of the world. You are not the light of the world. Listen carefully. 
We are to shine the light of purity, the light of humility, the light of godly character, the light of service, serving the people according to the will of God, the light of love and compassion, the light of working in truth. That is God's definition of earthly relevance. Are you understanding me? And let me go further to the next thing I want us to get here because there are some critical things I want us to hit which have not, which we are still getting close to it. Look at what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Another way, another definition, another de a, a divine definition of earthly relevance. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Chapter 2, look at what it says in verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Look at what it says. It says, Now, thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Hallelujah. Do you see how we, we, we obtain earthly Relevant by God's definition. We diffuse the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ where we walk, where we live, in our families. Are you understanding me? And how do we diffuse the fragrance? It's not just by our lips, it's by our lifestyle. You should be trustworthy as a Christian. Many Christians are not trustworthy. Many Christians are not trustworthy. You should be trustworthy. Your word should be your bound. Come on. You should be a person of integrity. People should not see you and they get afraid. No. Your tongue should not be sold to lies and craftiness to the point that when you greet somebody good money, the person will have to check his wrist watch to see if it is really money before they answer you because of your craftiness. That is not Christianity. That is insanity. You are not relevant to the world. You see, relevance by God's design is we transforming moral landscapes with our character, diffusing the knowledge of Christ by our lifestyle, not just our mouth. We think that it's about preaching, 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 and making noise in that office. No. Be a person of integrity. Be a Joseph in that office. Joseph got to the house of Potiphar. He was a person of integrity. He, and when the wife wanted to sleep with him, what did he say? I fear God. Be a Joseph. Be a Jacob. That will bring the presence of God to that establishment. That is how to be earthly relevant. If you are in politics, hear me. Be a Daniel. Be a Daniel that will represent the purpose of God. Do not represent the interests of your tribe. Do not represent the interests of your belly. Do not interest, represent the interests of your family. Represent the interests of God in that place that you occupy as a politician. Represent the interests of God. Show me a politician that will the, represent the interests of God. I will show you a politician that will, that will be a blessing to their nations. That will roll away the cause of poverty, the cause of terrorism, the cause of wickedness. And if the Bible says when the righteous rules, the nation prospers. When the righteous rules, look at our nations in Africa and all over the world. Check if nations are prospering. Any nation that is not prospering is having wicked rulers at the hems of affairs. That's what the Bible says. That is, you see, we have to be earthly relevant by God's definition. Spreading the fragrance of Christ. Hallelujah. Look at verse 15. He said, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. We, that is how we should be. The fragrance of Christ. That whenever you, you find yourself, people should touch Christ in your character. They should touch Christ by your deeds. You should not be full of wickedness. We have give, we have, a lot of us have given God a very bad name by our characters. The next prophetic purpose of grace, this is where people love. The next prophetic purpose of grace is to save us from our enemies and those who hate us. That's the next purpose of grace. 
to save us from our enemies and those who hate us. That's the purpose. Number one, make us heaven worthy. Number two, make us earthly relevant. Number three, save us from our enemies and those who hate us. You see, once you become heaven worthy, you stir up hatred among children of darkness. Once you become heaven worthy, you stir up hatred among children of darkness. Once you become heaven worthy, that is why there is a package in God's grace that is to protect us from our enemies and those who hate us. Look at one of the major things God said to Abraham. God said to Abraham, I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. So the grace of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is built in such a way that it can be an enemy to our enemies and an adversary to our adversaries. Hallelujah to Jesus Christ. That is why if you are under the grace of God, nobody can suppress you for too long. You will see God replacing their privileged position <laughs> with yours. Look at what happened to Jacob. He got to the hand, house of Laban. Laban suppressed him for 20 years. At the end of the day, God transferred the wealth of Laban to him. You don't suppress people who are under the grace of God. If you try it, you lose your position. If you try it, you lose your prosperity. If you try it, you lose your privileged position. You don't suppress people who are under the grace of God. Look at what happened in Egypt. The Bible says there arose a king that knew not Joseph. And he was suppressing the people of God. He said, come, let's deal with them discreetly, craftily. And they began to, to make sure that every male child that is born is killed. They began to turn them into slaves. These were the elites of Egypt in those days. And they met them. They transformed them into slaves. Into slaves. Can you imagine the richest man in your country be turned into a slave? Be turned into a laborer? One who carries cement and blocks. That was what they did to the Jews. And the Bible says the more they oppress them, the more they increase. That is what happens when you are under grace. It becomes expensive for your enemy to oppress you. Do you know that when God was through with the Egyptians, they regretted doing what they did to the Israelites. Why? They were people of God's grace. People of God's grace, God gives instruction to their enemies. Touch not. When the enemy break it and touch them, God breaks them. There was a prophet from Judah that was sent to go and prophesy to the, to the king concerning his wicked ways. When the prophet rebuked the king for his wicked ways in 1 Kings chapter 13, the king stretched forth his hands and said, arrest him. The Bible says, the hand of the king froze. It became dry. It became paralyzed immediately. The Bible says his hands wither. That is what happened when you're under grace. So when you're under grace, you're not expected to be fighting with people. I will show you the condition of receiving protection under the grace of God. I will show you the condition. But let me take you somewhere. Go to the book of Exodus chapter 25. This is getting so sweet here. Exodus 25. The protection we enjoy from the grace of God is uncommon. Is uncommon. If you, are, if you say you're under grace and witches have eaten you like snacks, if you are not under grace, you're under a scam. If you say you're under grace, you have to sow a seed before you are free from your enemies. You are not under grace, you're under a scam. Can I tell you something? In the kingdom of darkness, they administer protection to human beings by asking them, to bring sacrifice. Some, sometimes you sacrifice your money. You sacrifice, there are people who sacrifice their children. Some sacrifice their mothers. There are pastors who sacrifice their members. On a serious note. They ask because they work with the kingdom of darkness. So when the kingdom of darkness want to prosper you by Baal and Molech, is going to ask you to bring sacrifice. That's why you see pastors today, they ask you to bring sacrifice for you to be protected from your enemies. That is a scam. The grace of God protects us from our enemies without we giving money to any pastor. 
Look at what the Bible says. Exodus 25. Watch this. Exodus 25. Sorry, Exodus 23, not 25. Exodus 23. Look at what the Bible says. What grace will do to us. Exodus 23, verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way. That's what grace does to us. Then it was an angel, but the angel is a type and shadow. It was Christ, actually, and Christ pre-incarnate, and Christ is the grace of God. So the Bible says, behold, I send an angel before. In another word, behold, I give you my grace to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. That means even if there are promises that God has made in our lives, it is the grace of God that will help us to, act, I mean, to get into the fulfillment of the promises. So he said, beware of him and obey his voice and do not provoke him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. This is the aspect of grace that our generation do not know. The grace of God is protected by the throne of God. And because it is protected, it is normally administered with truth. That is why Jesus came full of grace and truth. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the authentic grace, comes with truth. Now, if you don't obey the truth that the grace of God has brought to you, you lose the privileges of the grace of God. You can write it down. If I don't obey the truth that the grace of God brings to me, I lose the privileges of God's grace. If I don't obey the truth that the grace of God brings, I lose the privileges of God's grace. If I don't obey the truth that the grace of God brings, I lose the privilege of God. And one of the privileges of God's grace, look at it in verse 22. It says, but if you indeed obey his voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy. Oh, my Calibra Satalia. I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. So, the grace of God is given to us to save us from our enemies and those who hate us. He said, He will be an enemy to our enemies. If we align with the truth that grace brings, grace will be an enemy to our enemies. Grace will be an adversary to our adversaries. If we align with the truth, actually, we don't need teachers of firstborn, the doctrine of firstborn, first fruit, uh, spirit husband, all this nonsense. We need people that will present the truth of the gospel to us so that we tap into the full potential of God's grace, saving us from our enemies by being an enemy to our enemies and an adversary to our adversaries. You see, we cannot afford to overcome our enemies if God's, God's grace is not in our lives. Elijah would have been eaten like snacks by the 450 prophets of Baal. And the 400 prophets of Asherah, 850 people, team against only one man. He defeated all of them because of the grace of God. Paul went through a lot. Go and read 2 Corinthians chapter 11. You will see all he went through. And yet, he stood. There's nothing you can do in this wicked world without the grace of God. One of the prophetic purposes of this grace is to save us from our enemies and from all who hate us. Look at it in the book of Luke, quickly. Go to the book of Luke chapter 1. Let me show you something beautiful in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 1. So if you want to be saved from your enemies, you don't go and raise an altar of sacrifice. Go for the grace of God. And I will wrap this up by showing you the critical environment or weird, or let me say the faith position that will help you to enjoy the grace of God all your life. Are you understanding me? Luke chapter 1, verse 67. Something you should always ask God for is grace. Lord, give me grace. When you ask God for grace, God will send truth to you. <laughs> That's the way it works. When you ask God for grace, God sends truth to you so that you align with the truth. Then the grace will work in your life. It is people who align with truth that enjoy the best of grace. It is people who align with truth that enjoy the best of grace. Look at what the Bible says. 
in the book of Luke chapter 1, I'm going to read from verse 67. It says, now his father Zachariah, this is a prophecy of Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist. He said, now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, verse 70, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Hallelujah. Do you see the third agenda of God's grace is to save us from our enemies and from all who hate us, verse 72, by performing the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies may serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. I love this scripture. Why does grace save us from our enemies and from those who hate us? So that we can serve him without fear. So that we can walk in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. Hallelujah. So, and, and God does that by performing his, the oath he swore to Abraham. Let me quickly show you what is the oath that God swore to Abraham. That the grace of God is deployed to perform in our lives. What is that oath? Go to the book of Genesis chapter 22. Let me show you the oath that God swore to Abraham. The oath he swore to Abraham. Genesis chapter 22. Verse 15. <laughs> then the angel of the Lord pre-incarnate Christ, which is the grace of God himself. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, Maliba Satalia, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, and have not withheld your son, your only son, Isaac. Remember, Abraham was a template of God. Isaac was a template of Christ. So they were at the cross. They were at the cross. Do you know that this, the same, this was the same, this is the same place that Jesus would later, was later crucified. This is the same place. And look at what he said. Verse 17. Blessing, I will bless you. Hallelujah. And multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven as, and as the sun which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. And your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies. That is the blessing. That was the oath God swore to Abraham. The possessing of the gates of our enemies. So the grace of God is released to us to save us from our enemies and from those who hate us by giving us what it takes to possess the gates of our enemies. What are the gates of our enemies? I've taught before, the gate of hell, the gate of grave, and the gate of death. These are the three gates of our enemies. That grace enables us to possess. I wish I have another hour or two, but I'm closing soon. You see, grace helps us to possess the gates of hell by keeping us always in the place of God's manifest presence. Grace helps us to possess the gate of grave by preserving us from the forces of the grave. Grace protects us from the gates of death by making sure we fulfill our days. And also the day of the rapture, grace will bring us out of the grave. And it will not be, oh, death, where's your victory? Oh, grave, where's, oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, grave, where's your victory? There's no time for me to demystify this thing. We can go over an hour to get her grace work by helping us to overcome, I mean to possess the gates of our enemies, but you must get this straight, that the third prophetic purpose of grace is to save us from our enemies. Now, what is the condition of being saved 
from your enemies by grace. It is not by hating your enemies. It's not by hating your enemies. Look at the condition. It's not by praying against your enemies. The genuine grace of God will not lead you to pray against your enemies. Let me show you in the Bible. He will not lead you to pray. Go to Matthew chapter 4 quickly as we bring this to a close. Matthew chapter 5, not chapter 4. Matthew chapter 5. The condition of being saved from our enemies by grace. Matthew chapter 5 verse 43. He said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That means under Judaism, it was said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. Do you know that pastors today are preaching Judaism? That's how they tell you to hate your enemy and love your neighbor. Hate your enemy by praying that God should kill them. It's Judaism. It's not Christianity. It's not Christianity. He said, you have heard that it was said, you should love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who cost you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Why? That you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? That means you paralyze the grace of God when you hate your enemies. You paralyze the grace of God when you cannot do good to those who cause. I, I, I hope I'm talking to somebody here today. You paralyze the grace of God when you don't bless those who cause you. You paralyze the grace of God when you don't pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. You paralyze the grace of God when you don't love your enemies. You paralyze God grace. So this is how we have been paralyzing God's grace by hating our enemies, by declaring three days dry fasting for God to kill them, by giving some money to some pastors and asking the pastor to pray for God to kill that person that snatched your husband and the pastor will pray and the person will indeed die. Do you think it was God that answered the prayer? It wasn't God. It's a demon called Molech. Molech is a killer in the realm of the spirit. When the grace of God go after the woman that took your husband, the grace of God will get her safe. She's going to weep and repent of her sins and return your husband to you and become a child of God. Even your husband will also repent and become a child of God. If grace go after the woman who snatched your husband. But if Molech goes after the woman who snatched your husband, Molech will kill the woman. He will turn her into a mad woman. There are prophets on ground that collect money from people and pray against people that snatch their husbands and the people die. Some of them become mad. You guys are not engaging God in battle. You are engaging a demon in battle. And the blood of those people that you people are killing by your prayer will speak against you. Blood cries. Either you shed blood by using cutlass, what you call banga here in Kenya, or you shed blood by shooting somebody with a gun, or you shed blood by instigating people to be killed, or you shed blood by giving a pastor money to go and kill the person for you through prayers, the blood of the person will cry against you. If you want grace to handle your enemies, do not engage these this charlatans you call pastors. Engage Jesus himself by following the principles. He said, but I said to you, love your enemies. Matthew 5, 44. Bless those who curse you and grace will be released to be an enemy to your enemies, to be an adversary to your adversary. Hallelujah. He said, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you and the grace of God will be released. If you want to paralyze the grace of God in your life, curse you. Curse your enemies. If you want to paralyze the grace of God on your life, ask God to kill your enemies. You will see God will step aside. When God steps aside, a demon will step in. And you begin to walk with a demon. You will think that you are working with God. I have said, one of the greatest attack upon the human race, upon the church, is the Father and that gospel. The Father and Thy prayer, what you call dangerous prayer, the Father and Thy gospel has paralyzed the grace of God from saving a lot of people from their enemies. Do you know how grace saves people from their enemies? I've told you. It's by getting the enemy safe or paralyzing the enemy's powers. 
I'm bringing the enemy to the point of submitting to Jesus. That is how, watch this. The disciples, one day in Luke chapter 9, maybe let me read it quickly. Go to Luke chapter 9. Let me show you how the grace of God handle our enemies. Luke chapter 9. Jesus himself, who is the grace of God, showed us, showed us the example. Luke chapter 9, go to verse 51. Now it came to pass, when the time had come for him to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. Verse 54. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? Do you want us to pray fire like Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them. The way some pastors and some members need to be rebuked today. Crying fire, yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to be rebuked the way the Lord rebuked them. He said he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. That is the problem we have in church today. We don't know the manner of spirit we are of. We don't know that we are working with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does not kill enemies, but convert the enemies and paralyze them not to fulfill their hidden intention. Listen, he said, you don't know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Do you see grace? Do you see grace? For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's life, but to save them. Listen, if you want the grace of God to work in your life, walk away from any church. That is breaking this principle that we have just read. Walk away. You don't even need to tell them that. You don't even, even need to tell them that you have gone. Silently withdraw from those churches for your own good. If the pastor calls you, switch off your phone. Switch off your phone. You know why? They are connecting you to the demon of destruction. And once the demon has destroyed for you, it will come and destroy you. Hear me again. When that demon has destroyed for you through your sacrificial giving to the pastor, when the demon has destroyed for you, it will return to destroy you because you guys engage him for battle. Listen, when you engage the devil for battle, he will fight for you and come back to fight you. In my village, we had families that were into native doctor. Now that all their fathers have died, all the children are in trouble. The demon that fought for them then is now fighting against them. Don't walk with the evil one if you want to live a peaceful life on it. God has a package of protection for you and I. And that package of protection is his grace. We cannot engage his grace to protect us from our enemies if we don't follow his principles in the Bible. Some of you don't even read your Bibles. You just follow what the pastor is saying and fast for 20 days. Do this for 200 days. Uh, the person that, the, your boss that is hindering your, your promotion, ask God to kill him. Pray that he will run mad. Pray. Keep praying. They will run mad, then your own children will also run mad. Because what the devil do on your behalf, he will come back and do it in your life. What the devil do on your behalf, I have no time. I have a lot of stories I will have shared with you to prove to you that what Satan do for you, he will come back and do to you. Don't forget that. You can write it down boldly. What Satan do for you will come back to do to you. Stop listening to these stupid pastors that are deceiving you and misdirecting you, telling you lies to pray against your enemies. Yes, you will pray and there will be result and you'll be the next to be visited. That demon will come back to eat you the way he ate the other people. There are a lot of people that follow false prophets and prophetess who are in trouble today. Some of them were praying for them for God. I even received a call yesterday. Somebody told me that, oh, pray for my mother. She cannot talk. She's paralyzed on the bed. What happened? Prophetess. She had been told to bring land she brought. 
bring this, she bring. She has brought everything, and the devil has worked for her. Now the devil has work, is working against her. She can't talk. She can't speak. What we have in the church today, most churches, is not God. Walk in wisdom. They are killer prophetesses on ground. They are killer prophets on ground that you need to run to the grace of God and stop following their teachings so that the grace of God can save you from their sword. Let me close this with this. The fourth prophetic purpose of grace is to keep us, I won't say much here because I need to wrap up, keep us in times of trials in time of trials and temptation is to keep us no time for me to exp expound on that is to keep us in trials and temptation you see uh, paul was having an an an, an issue the, the bible spoke about um, uh, um, the, the, um a messenger of Satan was given to him to be fought his, his flesh. He was in the midst of intense battle. And what did God say? My grace is sufficient for you. So the fourth purpose of grace is to keep us in the midst of trials and temptation. Is to give us the sufficient uh, energy we need to run this race and overcome these things. Now, what is the faith position you need to take as a child of God? To enjoy the benefits of grace like Noah did in his days. What is the faith position? Follow me to the book of Hebrew, chapter 4. Hebrew chapter 4. The faith position that you need to take. Hebrew chapter 4. The faith position you need to take. Hebrew chapter 4 is a beautiful chapter that spoke about God bringing us to his rest. And look at what he said in verse 14. Hebrew chapter 4. Seeing then that we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. The first faith position you take to enjoy the best of God's grace Keep to the tenets of the faith. Keep to the standards of God's kingdom. Irrespective of the pressure that may be on you. Noah kept to the standard of God's kingdom in a perverse and crooked generation. And he found grace. Keep to the standard of God's kingdom. Now, there are three aspects of grace. There's a grace that come on us while we are yet sinners to pull us to God. There's a grace that come, number two, after we have not accepted Jesus to keep us in God. And there's a grace that come, number three, that is going to manifest fully in the day of our redemption. So the first grace is called saving grace. The second grace is called sufficient grace. The third grace is called exceeding grace. Saving grace brings you into the family of God. Why sufficient grace keeps you in the family of God. So make use of the saving grace of God in your life by remaining true to God, bearing the standards of the kingdom. The next verse says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize or who cannot be touched with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are yet with our sin. Verse 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in time of need. When you, when you uphold the standards of God in every circumstances that you find yourself, you will be able to live as a throne room Christian. Living as a throne room Christian involves upholding the standards, living a life of praying and fasting, and spending time with the world, and working with people who work in grace, Fellowshipping in good churches, churches full of the authentic grace of God, not the perverse grace of God. And when you do these things that I have just said, you will see yourself walking in the grace of God. I will use the next minutes to pray with you. So what I want you to do right now, wherever you are, maybe if you can stand, you stand on your feet and let us pray. Let's ask the Lord to forgive us 
in every area that we have abused his grace in our lives. Many of us have walked in the false grace that we thought it was a true grace. So let's ask the Lord for mercy. Let's ask the Lord to forgive us, to cleanse us, to purify us, to wash us from every field, every sin, every debris, everything that we have done to pervert his grace in our lives. Father, I pray for your mercy upon us right now. Most of us have abused your grace. We have perverted your grace. We have walked in things that are not your grace. We have not upheld your standard. Therefore, we pray this very moment for mercy that you forgive us from every sins, O oh God, and keep us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up everyone that you have made to participate in this service into your hands. I pray, oh God, that this word that you have sent to us will grow in every one of us and establish us in your grace. That the prophetic purpose of your grace will be actualized in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, that the prophetic purpose of your grace will be actualized in our lives. That the prophetic purpose of your grace will be actualized in our lives. That everyone, oh God, that you have caused to be part of this service today will be intercepted by your grace, arrested by your grace, and hidden in your grace, and protected from their enemies, and be made heaven worthy, and be made earthly relevant, and be given the energy they need through trials and temptations in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We're going to take our offering quickly before we, as we close this. We thank God for his mercies. I think our pay bill should be on the screen right now as we give our, our offerings to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You can give your tithes and your offering. All our members that are following right now, please make use of that. And those of you that want to join, that maybe may not be our members, you can join in giving your offering right now. And um, you make use of the page book be on the screen, 307-500. You give your tithe and your offering. Now that God has sent his word to us, let's now give him resources to extend this word to other places. The, the, the account number is tithes and offering. And the, whatever the Lord lay in your heart, just give it, it could be your tithe, it could be your offering, whatever, give it right now so that we use this word, these resources to extend the word to other places and other people that we need this word. Just um, make sure you participate in this and uh, you give in faith, you give in faith, trusting him to use this to extend his work and also appreciating him for the word that he has sent to us today. That's what we do in the Crop of Spirit. We contribute our resources to spread the word to other parts of the world through the platforms that the Lord has given us. So what you are putting on this mantle today is going to minister back to you. Are you understanding me? Because you are saving a soul with this money that you are putting on this mantle. Let me pray for you. Father, I lift up everyone who have participated in this giving. I pray, oh God, that let this act of worship attract, oh God, a glory upon the works of our hands. Inhale our worship and expel your glory. Even as we offer ourselves to you, oh God, in line with our resources, let your grace fulfill its prophetic purposes in our lives in the name of Jesus. And let our economies blossom to the glory of your name. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for being part of this service today. By God's grace, I will bring... I know somebody, some of you normally call and, and think we come on Citizen every Sunday. Actually, we don't come every Sunday. We come uh, once a month. You get my point. I receive your calls and every message. So by next month, June, the third Sunday of June, God willing, we'll be back again. This time around, it will be another word from God that will add to your faith. Until then, stay strong and do not forget, 
that Jesus is coming soon. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. strong and loving hands around me and he showed me the way I ought to go no one ever cares for me like Jesus there's no other friend so kind as he no one else could take my sins and darkness from me Oh how much He cares for me for 
Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as sin. No one else could take my sins and darkness from me. Oh, how much. 